we're, we're going through everything trying to figure out like what, what what's the reason but right now we have no answers and when you have no answers for something it, it, it shakes you Derby week is supposed to be filled with excitement and celebration, but this year, this Derby week, the deaths of four horses in six days at Churchill Downs casting a shadow over all the festivities with many questions about how this happened. So this morning on the backside of Churchill Downs, we talked to the trainer of two of the horses involved. Sports director Ken Spencer was there joining us now with any new information you have on this, Ken. You, you know, guys, horses, horses euthanized after an injury is bad enough, but out of the four fatalities, two of them occurred when the horses simply died suddenly on the track. Those two horses belong to trainer Safi, Safi Joseph Jr. and are owned by Ken Ramsey. One of the deaths occurred opening night. The other took place yesterday. One of the horses died immediately during a race. The other right after a race. I asked Joseph Jr. today about the incidents. He said they don't know the cause. Blood work on both came back fine. He was also asked if he thought there was wrongdoing pertaining to the horses. I don't think it's it's bad fortune. It's, it's not it's not about that. It, it, to happen twice, it's 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 not it's not. I, don't, I mean, we're gonna see. I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't I don't I don't have an answer right now. I mean, I wish I did. I wish I did. If I had an answer, I, I would love to have an answer. I would love to have some kind of closure. But we just have to go through protocol and and, and try to get to the bottom of it. I mean, it, it, having not having an answer is the worst thing. I mean, as I said, when the horse gets injured, that's different. You have an answer, all right? This, this is this is an answer. Now, of course, it's all troubling. And remember, Safi Joseph Jr. has a horse in the Derby, Lord Miles, who won the Wood Memorial. Isaiah Kim Martinez is getting reaction from Churchill Downs today in an equine hospital in Lexington. Isaiah, Churchill is calling this unacceptable, and they want necropsies, which is the equine version of autopsies on all of these uh, horses. Sure, Doug, that was the exact words they used, was unacceptable. They did not waste time when it comes to getting a statement out there this afternoon. They didn't mince words either. Churchill Downs didn't when it came to this string of death, calling them not just completely unacceptable, but also highly unusual. Churchill Downs statement reads, quote, we take this very seriously and acknowledge that these troubling incidents are alarming and must be addressed. Each horse was transported to the University of Kentucky Veterinary Diagnostics Lab for complete necropsies. We continue to press for answers and are working with regulators to conduct swift and thorough investigations, end quote. The, the concerns come as Champions Day finishes up, celebrating horse racing history, an archive that unfortunately, because of the nature of the sport, also comes with great heartbreak. I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason, you know, to what's happened recently. Um, it's just very unfortunate. Gary Prater, lifelong Louisville resident, heard about the news this morning before coming to the track. Broken bones, they just happen. It's part of horse racing. We also talked to a veterinary surgeon about this. Am, am I concerned that four horses are dead? 100%. No, you'd be silly not to be concerned about that. Uh, it, it bothers me. Dr. Alan Ruggles works at the Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital, where Derby qualifier Wild on Ice was euthanized last week. It, it's hard to make um, specific conclusions just because they happen close together. And if you're wondering why many race horses have to be euthanized following injury. We need to get horses very comfortable right away. Uh, to prevent those uh, secondary problems. And some injuries are so severe that we're unable to get them comfortable because they have to immediately weight bear. And ultimately, they have to walk to live and be healthy. And we also reached out to the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission for comment on this. They, they said they're aware of these incidents and are looking into it. Doug, Che, Kent, back to you guys. Isaiah, thank you. Um, Kent, some of these uh, deaths happened while they've been ra were racing on the turf course, and of course Churchill Downs itself acknowledged problems with the, the turf course out there, the new one, and they had it rebuilt. Any possible connection to this at all? So, Safi Joseph Jr. was actually asked about the turf course and if he thought, you know, any of that could pertain to this. He said no, he didn't think there was anything wrong with the turf course because with his horses, like I said, th these are not injuries. These are horses suddenly dying on the track. This isn't, I don't, doesn't feel like a Santa Anita situation. Remember a few years ago, Santa Anita had like double digit deaths almost in like in a week or two span out there. They discovered the problem was with the track. They had to shut their track down, had to rip it up completely. These are four deaths right in a short amount of time, which is still very concerning as you saw as you saw the statement from Churchill Downs. 
But one of the things is you have two that had an injury, one on the turf course, one on the dirt track. Remember, Wild on Ice was getting ready and, and trained on the mm -hmm. dirt track and then broke down right after his workout. And then, of course, you have those two horses that suddenly died right on the spot. For me, those two deaths right there are the most concerning out of all of this. All right, it's a shame. It's what everybody's talking about, really looking for answers, but we're weeks away from those. Yep. All right, thank you, Kent. Well, as we reported Friday night, Keeneland and Lexington ended its 15-day spring meet with the most horse deaths since 2019. Three horses died at Keeneland over the 15 days, each from a catastrophic injury while racing at Keeneland. Keeneland sent us a statement Friday night saying the track has instituted some of the strongest safety and integrity protocols in North America. All new at 5, the ACLU is filing suit against portions of the controversial anti-trans bill in Kentucky. The ACLU of Kentucky, along with the National Center for Lesbian Rights, is seeking to block the portion of the bill that bans gender-affirming care for minors in Kentucky, calling the ban unconstitutional. Lawmakers passed the bill over the governor's veto, saying they didn't want minors to make decisions they may regret in the future. Well, in a statement, the National Center for Lesbian Rights legal director says parents and not the government should make medical decisions for their children. He goes on to say the bill is a dangerous law that intrudes on family privacy and prevents doctors from doing their job. Well, it is a beautiful day out there, especially for a very special Kentucky Derby tradition. We know the Kentucky Derby is packed with different events today. One of the favorites. All right. The great steamboat race goes back to the early 1960s. And what a sky we have for a great steamboat race this evening. Belle Louisville set to take on the Belle of Cincinnati and the American Countess in the race. Uh, it gets start time to about 6 o'clock. It's a three-horse race in the river. WHS 11's Alden German is aboard the Belle of Louisville right now. So, Alden, uh, do you have a good feeling about this year's chances for the Belle? Always, Doug. I'm, I'm convinced the Bell's going to be able to uh, uh, three-peat and uh, keep its title. I'm standing here in the engine room right now, and here's some really cool history for you. This is uh, the original steam engine for the Bell, but it's original in the sense that it's been with the Bell since it's existed but it's older than the bell itself. It's at least since 1890, it's that old uh, that this uh, original steam engine was built. And this is also what's churning the paddle wheel at the very back as well. So they have a couple of these uh, built in at least 1890, older than the bell of Louisville itself. They believe it could even be as old as the 1870s. So there's a lot of mixed working history here on the bell. And it's just been really fascinating to see how it operates. We've learned so much about the collection IP. At 4 o'clock, we got to see the boiler actually be fired up. So it's just really, really interesting seeing all of this uh, old history still working today. And you can say that elbow grease is uh, all you need. I think they make the joke that, you know, they don't build them like they used to, and they quite literally don't. We don't have very many things that are operating uh, off of machines that were built in the 19th century. So very, very cool stuff out here. And the weather is also very nice. For more on that, we'll send it back over to uh, Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine. Ben. Very cool stuff out there, Alden. First, we want to show you that we do have some issues uh, traffic-wise, especially on Interstate 71 southbound. Uh, so we do have an uh, overturned semi, 71 southbound, uh, right to before the Snyder. So it looks like right now traffic is being diverted at uh, exit 329 at the Crestwood exit. Uh, so there you can see uh, the colors there on 71 south, indicating uh, that shutdown there. This could last a uh, half hour to an hour as they uh, try to upright that semi, but uh, there's where uh, we do have uh, the traffic being diverted in the detour there at the Crestwood exit. Another problem too, two lanes blocked due to a crash 71 southbound uh, at the Waterson. Uh, so a couple issues there on 71 South this afternoon. Uh, right now, 65 degrees as we look over the Belle of Louisville. Wonderful weather for the boat race. Uh, humidity at 36%. And uh, look at all that sunshine uh, throughout the area. That system that brought all the clouds and some sprinkles uh, occasionally over the last couple of days is now moving off to the east as expected. So this evening will be a little bit on the cool side as we fall into the 50s after sunset. And then chilly tonight with a mostly clear sky, upper 30s and lower 40s. 
So a jacket early, but then we won't need it later in the afternoon. And temperatures topping out in the lower 70s for tomorrow afternoon. So forecast low tonight, 44 degrees. Uh, lunchtime temperature tomorrow at 65 and then milder with a partly sunny sky for our third be a high of 73 degrees. We do have a chance for a few showers off and on for part of our Oaks and Derby. We're going to time that out uh, coming up in just a few minutes in our storm team forecast. Okay, thank you very much, Ben. One of our other top stories here tonight, three Louisville McDonald's restaurants are now facing fines accused of violating child labor laws. You might remember our story from last year. A customer recorded this video of what they believe to be two 10-year-olds working the drive through window at the McDonald's on Taylor Boulevard. They were behind the counter taking money, even handing over food. Well, Alexis Jones was first to break the story last year. Today, she found out this location is one of the stores now facing a fine. It's been a few months since I last visited the McDonald's here on Taylor Boulevard. Then owner Bauer Foods LLC said the children working behind the counter weren't employees, but newly released findings from the Labor Department say otherwise. They got little kids up in here working the drive through The viral video that's still shocking to watch. This is ridiculous and wonder why the lines wrapped around because I got these little kids up in this mother. This is the moment customer Nathan Pitts pulled up to a window at the McDonald's in August. Pitts and his girlfriend say they were disgusted to find two children taking and making orders around midnight. We blur the kids' faces to protect their identity. Pitts says they looked as young as 10 years old. The fact that these kids just handed me my drinks is me off. In a statement, Bauer Foods LLC said, quote, we are aware of the incident and can confirm the minors shown in the video are not employees of the restaurant. They are children of some of our employees. However, according to the Labor Department findings, the two children were employed and sometimes worked as late as 2 in the morning. The investigation also shows they prepare food orders, clean the store, work the drive through and operated a deep fryer. This is the one that was most egregious to me because that's a terrible work safety violation. Labor attorney Adam Johnson says kids must be over 14 years old to work at a restaurant in Kentucky. And even if they are 14, they can't use certain equipment or work past 7 p.m. Though the Taylor Boulevard location has to pay more than $39,000 for violations, Johnson says that's not enough. A business is not gonna learn anything by being slapped on the wrist for $39,000. Johnson says the state should increase the fine, allow private attorneys to sue the owner, and provide more oversight so no other child is exploited. In Louisville, Alexis Jones, WHS 11, on your side. The Department of Labor looked at three different franchises who operate more than 60 McDonald's across Kentucky, Indiana, Maryland, and Ohio. They found between the 62 restaurants, more than 300 children worked more than the legally permitted hours and worked with equipment they're not permitted to, including hot grills, ovens, and deep fryers. Just from the Louisville-based Bauer Food LLC, they employed 24 minors under 16 years of age and not permitted to be working those hours. Another story we're keeping an eye on here tonight, a developing story involving the Louisville Metro Police SWAT team. A situation's been underway after a homicide happened in the Shively area of town. It is impacting one nearby school. Right now, dismissal has now started. We are told at Jacob Elementary School after a police situation put everything on hold today. The school canceled all after school activities today because the bus compound is also nearby. This could impact routes in other parts of town as well. Jacobs Elementary was put on heightened security earlier this afternoon after a fatal shooting happened on nearby Nichols View Court. It is right down the street from the school. Officers are still on the scene right now. We have also seen our crews there on the scene have seen armored vehicles starting to leave. We are told the LMPD homicide unit is investigating and following leads, but no arrests have been made.